Good day. My name is James Lucci Aparese from 2DVMB uh, Group 7, and I'm here to report on the main types of vaccines in par as a part of Assignment 1 of Zootech 2 to 5, Poultry Health and Flock Health Management. Vaccines come in different shapes and sizes, and they have different they have differing factors such as how they are made and how they work. And in this presentation, we will be briefly discussing 11 main types of vaccines. The first type of vaccine is the living heterologous vaccine. Uh, effective vaccines such, a, such as the COVID vaccines usually need multiple booster shots in order to achieve immunization. And homologous vaccines, in contrast to heterologous vaccines, are uh, used the same type of vaccine as booster shots, whereas heterologous vaccines use, use different vaccine types as booster shots. The next type of vaccine is the living vaccine, and these vaccines contain a still living pathogen, but it is significantly weakened in its states to cause diseases. In chickens, the pathogens and virus in living vaccines must infect the bird and allow it to multiply in its body to produce immunity, preferably with minimal reaction. The multiplication of the virus is necessary as only relatively small amounts of the virus is administered to the birds. The third type of vaccine is the living attenuated vaccine or organisms. And it is similar to the living vaccines in which it contains a still living uh, pathogen such as or viral agents, but these wild pathogens or viral agents are weakened. And this is usually done by attenuation in a laboratory which is done through repeated culturing. The next type of vaccine is the killed organisms vaccine or inactivated vaccines. And it consists of a virus or pathogen that have been grown in culture, but killed to remove the disease causing capabilities. Killed vaccines are administered by individual injection and is, is accompanied by an adjuvant of aluminum hydroxide or an oil. An adjuvant is a substance that enhances the immune response by increasing the stability of the vaccine in the body, stimulating the body for a longer period of time. The fifth type of vaccine is the inactivated toxins. Inactivated toxin vaccines are vaccines that are based on the toxin produced by bacteria, which are then deactivated or killed in order to render it harmless. Uh, bacteria, uh, bacteria produces toxins which usually enters through the bloodstream, and this is what causes the, the diseases in organisms and uh, inactivated toxins use the toxins produced by the bacteria as an antigen in the vaccine to elicit immunity, and it is usually accompanied by an adjuvant of aluminum or calcium, salt, calcium salts. The sixth type of vaccine discussed here is the capsular polysaccharide vaccines, and this kind of vaccine is used to counter the type of bacteria that contains structures known as capsular polys polysaccharide capsules. Uh, these structures, the polysaccharide capsules, are the out constitute the outermost layer of the cells, causing them to be involved in mediating the bacteria in its environment. And it is for this reason that they are believed to have important virulence factors for bacterial pathogens. Uh, this type of vaccine is usually created by removing or purifying the polysaccharide, which uh, capsulates the, the bacteria. Once injected, the vaccine stimulates the immune system in order to create antibodies for this type of bacteria. The seventh type of vaccine is known as the subunit vaccine. Subunit vaccines are similar to inactivated vaccines, meaning they do not contain live pathogens. They differ as only the antigenic parts of the pathogen are remaining in the vaccine. And this comes at a cost as... Uh, there needs to be a proper screening and examination in order to determine which particular combinations elicit an effective immune response. The eighth type of vaccine is the DNA vaccine, and it is a relatively recent type of vaccine, usually referred to as third generation vaccines. And the way it works is that it transects a specific antigen coding DNA sequence into a cell of an organism as a mechanism to induce an immune response. And these type of vaccines are usually used to treat mumps and measles. The ninth type of vaccine is the passive immunization. And 
It is when an organism receives antibodies or lymphocytes that have been produced by another organism's immune system. And a prime example of this is newborn babies receiving passive immunity through its mother's placenta. The tenth type of uh, vaccination is the nonspecific immunotherapy. And nonspecific immunotherapy is a way of treating the disease using its own immune system. There are the, these are used as adjuvants in conjunction with the main treatment in order to boost the immune response. And the last type of vaccine discussed here is the edible vaccines. And it is a relatively new type of vaccine that is uh, developed in in uh, is developed in mind of the poor and developing countries and this vaccine is claimed to be low cost and not requiring to be refrigerated meaning that it is relatively uh, light on the equipment side of things and these kinds of these kinds of vaccines makes use of genetically engineered plants in order to elicit an immune response although several edible vaccines have entered clinical trials None of them have been approved for marketing yet. That's all. Thank you.